guys, welcome back to the Kosi Arsenal podcast. My name is Kosi. Welcome back to a brand new video. Arsenal 0, Manchester City 0. That leaves Arsenal in a very good position and that actually boosts our confidence because we've not lost to Liverpool and we've not lost to Manchester City this campaign, even though we are not tied to favourites according to Opta and all the other um, you know, analyst sites. We are actually still doing very, very well. I think the point that we will take is a point that um, uh, Manchester City don't want to take. They thought this would have been three points for them and i don't think they really deserved any points in that game in my opinion they really really were poor for me um at trying to break down arsenal william saliba man of the match and that explains everything i just don't think really city um gave it their all i think they thought arsenal would be a little bit much better and difficult um and maybe they also thought maybe a point is still good enough at this point uh but talk to me in the comment box below who was your man of the match let's start off there uh william Saliba has been voted as man of the match on Sky Sports. I will agree with that, but um, I'm still not contented because I thought Gabriel Megales was absolutely fantastic. Martin Odegaard was f absolutely fantastic as well. But with him, with William Saliba, for me, the fact that he deals with Arling Haaland is one of those ties that we always look out for in this game. Uh, Saliba and Haaland. And every single time this campaign, he's actually come out on top. And every single time this campaign, Haaland, Haaland doesn't have a shot on target he doesn't have a shot on goal and it just keeps on you know getting worse and worse and, and worse for Haaland and better and better and better for Saliba so I, I think Saliba man of the match I will agree with that but talk to me about your man of the match is it Odegaard I thought he was fantastic um there, there are a few th you know maybe things that he didn't actually get right especially in the final third I thought he would have created something and then definitely Gabriel Magales he was outstanding obviously you cannot fail to, to talk about Jakub Kivio until he went off fantastic because for me on down that right hand side um or on our left hand side i don't think city really exploited anything there i, I don't truly really think um city had any kind of joy uh, before Jakub Kivio getting off the pitch so i thought uh, again Jakub Kivio having a very very good performance so talk to me in the comment box below who was your man of the match and then arsenal walking away with a point is it a point you would gladly take right we're going to talk about that is it a point you would gladly take or is it a point where you feel arsenal should have tried to go for it a little bit more especially in the last 10 minutes of the game when we had noticed that city had been neutralized and i think that's what we did today we neutralized city uh, we, we, when we neutralized them the last 10 minutes of the game martinelli trusted coming on and arsenal starting to you know look a little bit brighter and threatening on the other uh, on the other end of the spectrum do you think we should have gone for the win do you think arsenal could have won the game if we had tried better i want you to know your thoughts and opinions right in the comment box below right let's start with the uh, let's start off with the boring uh you know kind of it because it was boring absolutely absolutely boring and i think the numbers will show you arsenal really didn't have a little position in this game uh, and city didn't have anything to do with that position in this game and i think that's the problem with Mik uh, with uh, Mikel Arteta that he's, he believes in if we cannot win don't lose if you don't if you can't win the game if you don't win the game uh, just don't lose it and that is what has happened uh, you know on two occasions now against manchester city in the community shield that was number one and now today at the Etihad stadium right if you can't win it just don't lose it right and, and we've not lost the game and pep Kujela will be going back and look, look looking back into his books and it's like we were exploited we were absolutely exploited by this Arsenal side. Uh, they came to pick up a point and th they picked up a point as if it, this was the Emirates Stadium. It didn't look like this was at the Etihad Stadium. I thought we respected them and we'll talk about the way we set up against them and why I thought that uh, Mikel Arteta was actually uh, absolutely spotting. But for me, with Manchester City, I thought they could have been more program you know, pragmatic. Um, we were pragmatic. They could have been a little bit more, you know, uh, you know, m more active in trying to break Arsenal down. Th the way Pep started that game with two wingers who were actually, you know, playing, a, you know, a right back, Manuel Akanji and Yosko Givadio played at halftime as your wingers. Like that, that was crazy. Not only crazy, in my opinion, but that was weak 
in my opinion like really really weak and that actually gave us a lot of joy on the wide areas um manchester city didn't try to stretch the pitch as much as uh, as much as they could and we were comfortable half time we were very very comfortable by the way i didn't really see any opportunity that was going to give city a goal at half time because for me if you have jeremy Doku on the bench and you have jack relish on the bench as well and then you're playing manuela kanji Bernardo Silva and Yosko Givadio as the three players trying to interchange on the wide flanks doesn't make any sense. That is not going to win you a game against this resilient Arsenal side that have literally not considered any goals this year. We played nine games now in the Premier League and I can tell you we considered a goal against Nottingham Forest. Uh, Taiwo Awani, that is his business, he already scores um, against Arsenal. He's their drug bar. Uh, we considered a goal, I think it was against... Um, Liverpool, 3-1 again. Uh, again, that was our own problem because uh, if we clear that ball, we don't concede that. So, Arsenal have considered around two or three goals since the turn of the year. Three goals, of course, the FC Portugal as well, uh, you know, dying minutes of the game. And then you play right back and left back as your wingers trying to, you know, add pressure to this team. It was never going to work. So for me, it was very, really, really boring. We thought that the excitement was going to come from Manchester City. We thought they would be more pragma pragmatic. Um, not really pragmatic. Uh, they, they would be more active in trying to break this Arsenal team down. We thought Arsenal would be pragmatic. We were very pragmatic. But City was so careful, right? Well, they were very careful. And, and, and look, it keeps things fresh. It keeps the try to rest really, really open. It means that Arsenal can go on top of the table anytime if Liverpool draw. It means that City can go on top of the table anytime if Arsenal fail to win their next game and Liverpool lose as well. So it keeps things very fresh. It keeps things very, um, v very exciting. But I don't think Manchester City really did enough. So I'm, I'm sorry to whoever was watching this game and you thought Arsenal in form, Manchester City at the head hard, one of the best teams in the world. We are going to have a very good game. It was boring. Really, really poor. Let's get to Mikel Arteta's tactical genius in this game and i love him because what he's trying to do in such games he's um trying to adapt to pep Guardiola, but he's also trying to match manchester city toe to door without forgetting to give them the respect they deserve now could we have won the game absolutely really really absolutely but michelata decided we're not going to win the game we're actually going to stay uh, in our lane so you look at that starting 11 that he actually put out there i'll just get myself out of the way um right here ja just there right so uh, david dreyer gabriel magales and saliba Jakub kivio white Odega, Jujino, declan rice gabriel jesus who i thought in the first 10 20 minutes um could have scored by the way in the first half he, he did get a um, couple of good chances and maybe that was a mistake you play Leandro Trossard in that game um he causes them more problems in, you know in at half time and i'll explain why then kai harvest who i thought in this game was very necessary and indeed he proved to be very necessary and bukai saka who actually walked away with an injury but didn't have much of an impact in the game but why i like Mikel Arteta's setup in this game is he set up in a way that manchester city's two key players in this game that is kevin de Bruyne and full foden were never going to get any space any space in that midfield to operate and do their thing i think kevin de Bruyne has never had any difficult um sessions playing against arsenal like he has done this campaign we have been very very di you know different we have been very very different i think um declan rice right now in this at this point deserves his flowers very much because he's one of those players that have upgraded this arsenal midfield and, and th there was um th there was um a, a, you know a, an incident i was comparing he loses the ball i think it was in this in, in the second half he kind of loses the ball to kevin de Bruyne, but then he runs very quickly and he wins it back something you know very similar happens when thomas Partey, i think is in position kevin de Bruyne wins the ball against him and de Bruyne really sprints very very quickly and party can't actually cover the distance so that is the difference between Partey, jigino and declan rice he is a monster in midfield especially when we don't have the ball he's been he's been very um conservative and pragmatic today in his uh setup um and i don't think 
he did enjoy that bit of joy that he really does, uh, you know, and he has done recently against West Ham, against Sheffield, against the likes of Luton Town, going ahead, trying to score goals. That was not his job today. His job was to make sure that Lodre and Kovacic do not have a lot of time to think about where they're going to receive the ball from and where they're going to put it next. And then, obviously, um, the, 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 the partnership with him and Gugino, just to make sure that Phil Foden, who has eventually substituted off, useless in this game, in my opinion. Kevin De Bruyne should have been substituted off as well, useless as well in this game. It was it was due to Mikel Arteta's setup. That midfield was solid, absolutely very very solid. Because you know, I, I think Pep came knowing if you win the midfield, you win the game. So he played Kevin De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, uh, you know, Mateo Kovacic, and uh, you know, and Phil Foden four midfielders and it was crowded right they tried to crowd it they tried to uh, make it difficult but arsenal and Mikel Arteta had already seen that we had already you know we, you already have a kai harvest who was playing more like um uh you know a striker but then pressing right in midfield then you have odegaard who was fantastic today and then you have the two declan rice and jejino who are actually on top of their games today so for me um i like the way Mikel set up you respect them Try to not give them any spaces to breathe. Don't give them chances. Don't allow, don't make any mistakes um, if you can. And try to make sure that you double up on the players that are actually difficult. We saw that when um, Jeremy Doc was introduced and Jack Grealish. Ben White, obviously, always being helped by Saka. And then Gabriel Jesus and Leandro Trossard, always hoping Jakub Kivio and Tomiasu. And I liked it because... That meant that Manchester City had to find something out of the extraordinary. And we didn't see that. And I know we, they have the ability to create something out of the extraordinary. Kevin De Bruyne can. Um, maybe the likes of Haaland can. Maybe the likes of Bernardo Silva can. I, I just didn't say it, right? I'm not saying City didn't do anything in this game. I'm not saying they, they didn't get any good opportunities i thought bernardo silva maybe could have scored maybe Alan harland um that chance that he you know fumbled from the corner maybe right but there were very very small chances and eventually they didn't total amount to not to, to nothing so did should arsenal have gone for the win my, my first problem guys is this look at that gabriel Jesus, uh you know positioning and look at trossard when it comes on for Gabriel Jesus, I am not really sure why Leandro Trossard has been deputizing Martinelli for all this time, and then all of a sudden, Gabriel Jesus starts and Leo doesn't start. Probably because Leo has played two games um, for Belgium. I think one, one was, was against England, the other, I'm not really sure, was it against Brazil, probably? Oh, I'm not really sure. But I think Trossard should have started this game. That's my point. Trossard should have absolutely started this game. The reason is he's more effective than Gabriel Jesus in wide areas. And I also think that Gabriel Jesus would have been a much better fit coming onto this game in the 70th or 80th minute. Because that is when Manchester City were trying now to push harder and we, we, we needed the pace, right? Actually... In my opinion, we should have brought on Gabriel Jesus and Leandro Trossard um, in the second half, not Gabriel Martinelli. I think Mart Martinelli is still affected by that injury. Um, you could see him. He did, he did put in uh, some work, but not as good as we know he can, right? So for me, Jesus should have come off the bench. I, I don't think he was useful, anywhere near useful, uh, in the first minutes of, 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 the, of, of the game where, um, you know, especially in the first half. He did get on the ball a couple of times. I don't think he was trying to impact. I, th I, I don't think he was, um, you know, creating a lot of impact. Got the good chances. They fell onto him. And we know he never buries the good chances. He's, he's not that guy. He's not that kind of guy. Why I'm disappointed a little bit, like on a scale of 10, I'm 0 0.5 disappointed, just 0 0.5. The rest of the 9.5, I'm really satisfied with the point. Where I'm, I'm disappointed is Arsenal didn't take the opportunity to exploit that Manchester City backline. And I guess we never, we, we would never know what, you know, Nathan Eke means to this Manchester City side. But he's one of their most consistent players and he's one of their most consistent defenders. And there's a time when Arsenal really created some moments and we could see that 
they were missing Nathan Ek. Whenever when he went off, uh, the backline was a little bit shaky. I, I don't think Josko Givadio has been top this campaign. I don't think Ruben N Diaz has been top as well this campaign. So a team without John Stones and Kai Walker and Nathan Ek, we should have had a go. We should have had, um, you know, we, we should have pressed a little bit, right? I, I, and maybe risking it would have caused a little problems for us. But I thought we could have risked a little bit. We could have seen, we could have tried to see what comes out of trying to go against this Manchester City side. But for me, um, overall, I'll take the point. Aston now at 65, Liverpool at 67, and Manchester City at 64. That means that there is no margin for error now. There is no margin for error and that is not uh, that, that's not only to Arsenal I'm, I'm really disappointed I was watching a few uh, match reactions before I did my w one myself and a few people were saying you know Arsenal now uh, they've got to win nine out of nine they, there's no room for error if you remember my predictions I said Arsenal and Manchester City will share points right and I said Liverpool will beat Brighton when I was predicting the last 10 games for each of the three and why I thought that Manchester City would drop points here is they were going to come under a lot of pressure. They know they do very they do well against um, any team in the last 10 games of the campaign, but there is nothing to guarantee that you beat Arsenal and you beat Villa and you beat all these other teams that are actually coming up and the likes of Spurs as well. So City drop points today. I think they will drop points um, against Villa. That's midweek. And I think they will drop points against Tottenham right? Arsenal drop points today, like I predicted. I think we drop points against Wolves. You remember that? Yeah, you remember that? I think we drop points against Wolves and I think we will win the big games, the difficult games. We will comfortably come out on top. So, no, no margin for error. Still Arsenal displaying a lot of discipline, a lot of uh, clinical, a lot of defensive cleanliness. It's now going to go down to the midweek, right? It's, it's game by game, right? It's game by game. But we came into this weekend with 10 games to go. Now it's nine games to go. By the time we get to the end of the week, right? By the time we get to the end of the week, that we are going to be um, nine games. Nine games, you know, eight games to go, actually. Eight games, right? And then remember, um, Arsenal will play Bayern midweek, and then we come back and play Brighton. So it's, it's game on. It's this month that decides who wins the title. And for me, Arsenal, as long as we stay strong, as long as Mikel Arteta can recycle the team and use his substitutions and his um, you know, players that are actually back from injury, Pate, we have seen him today. Fabio Vieira, we have not, actually. So if we can get the likes of Zichenko involved, if we can get the likes of Fabio Vieira involved and win games, the title, I'm going to say, is ours to lose. We have the biggest games to prepare for, and that means that we can over-prepare and we can blow some of these teams out of the water. Till midweek, the, 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 the table stays the same. Arsenal second, Liverpool top, and Manchester City third. We're talking about uh, the player ratings uh, later on on my channel, Kossi Arsenal, so make sure you do watch that as well.